Hey folks, welcome to another video. This one is a follow-up to the previous one where we designed a new GUI transaction for refurbishment process. We did it in less than 10 minutes. Of course, first of all, we started with a definition of why. Why we would need a custom solution for this process. So if you haven't seen that video, it makes sense to do it now, so you will get the business case, the whole background. I also explained the what SAP objects are taking part of this whole process. In this video, we will design a Fiori application. Let's do it. First of all, what do we need? We need Figma, the same software we used last time. We also need Fiori design system for web applications. Why this one? Because we will design an app for our SAP system, but the users will open it via Fiori Launchpad, which is web based. We download the whole package, we also follow other instructions which we will find on their website. Like for instance, we need this package of fonts. If you are totally new to Fiori, to design, to prototyping and web applications for instance, check out the description of this video, you will find my helping hand there, which you can just grab. It's time to design the refurbishment of Fiori app. So this is what we did last time for GUI. Now the concept is a bit different, since the technology and possibilities are yeah, much bigger and promising. We import and open the S4HANA WebKit from SAP. I use the non-touch version, because we will design a web app for large screens. On the left side we have many pages created. What's funny is the fact we cannot create new ones, because we use free version of Figma. But yeah, it. we will manage. We select the disclaimer page and rename it to design. We delete this content. Of course, we read it carefully, right? It was very important for us. Yeah. Then we go to assets. We gotta find a component called list report floor plan. We drag it to our canvas. Let's do some housekeeping. First, we change the title to, for example, Serialized Technical Objects. This is the title of our custom Fiori app. We go a bit down to the filters area. Let's change it. Search box is general, so it remains as it is. Second field, it will be installation location. Okay, the value and the drop down list can remain. Next field, let's say this one will be for technical objects, so I call it like this. Next one, serial number. Let's say the last one, which we want to see in this mockup, is valuation type. I will also change the icons in these fields. Let's go down. Now we change the title to hmm, technical objects. I will have 10 entries, that's why I mentioned it in the brackets. We go to the right. I assume you saw my previous video where we designed together the GUI transaction. We had a button with installation, the installation. This time I got another idea, I find it more intuitive, by the way. We will add here a custom button, it means we got to select this whole space and detach it, like this. Now we go to assets, we are looking for a menu button. I drag it here and now place it between these two buttons. And now we delete these two. Cool. This is a drop-down button, so I need some selection list for it, right? We go to Assets, I type drop-down and select the drop-down menu. We rename the first two entries, install and the install. The other entries, I just delete them. We resize this whole list. Voila. We can leave it here, we will come back to it during prototyping. We go back to our list, it's time to modify it. We start with the table headers. I renamed the first column to technical object. Second one, plant. Third one, storage location. Next one, serial number. Then installation location. It will be our superior equipment, right? So you see, I did some changes if we compare it with the GUI transaction. Let's say the last column will be valuation type. So this one called net amount, I just delete. But before I do it, I got to detach the component. Great. I know the alignment does not exist right now. No worries, we will repair it pretty soon. Let's focus now on the entries. The first column will have an equipment ID and description. 
To do it this way, I click the field and on the right side, I change it to pop in. I select the whole component and detach it. Now I delete all these things here like statues, category and stuff. I will leave only John Miller. We go to the second column. I will already enter here Texas Workshop and in the bracket, the technical name. So it's TX01. Storage location, it will be SP01, which stands for spare parts. Sphere number, I will just enter some placeholder right now. Installation location, this should be the same type of field like in the first column. So I just select it, Ctrl D and drag it over here. So this Charlotte, I can delete. All right. And the next field also. Valuation type, it won't be in Euro, of course. I select the component. On the right side, I deactivate the unit of measure. Now I rename it to new. Hmm. This arrow indicates we can select the entry and go into its details. Of course, in the future, this would be highly recommended to have such view, but now for let's say the very first MVP, we won't consider it. So I select it and change to empty. I will also change the alignment. I click this header and on the right side, I select deactivate right alignment. I do the same with the field. You see this highlighter here? Let's deactivate it as well. Now what I will do, I take all these entries which are below and I delete them. We select this one and press Ctrl D, in my case, nine times. Now what I will do offline, I will rename all these entries in the same way we did it in the previous video. Welcome back. You see some fields are empty. Exactly, because for example, these five first technical objects, they are not installed anywhere. They lie in the warehouse in the storage location SP01. The others are installed. We see one of the engines is refurbished and is currently located in this vehicle. Okay, the screen is ready. Now we will design the pop-up windows for installation and the installation. I go to assets. First, we have to find something called dialog. Here we go. Right click, detach. We gotta find this layer on the left side. We go to content to this violet placeholder. We detach it. I go to Assets, Input Field, I drag it inside. We select the placeholder one more time and on the right side we change the layout like this. I delete these colors and this icon. I select the field and change it to button, label, vertical placement of the label. I rename the header to Install Technical Object. The field label I change to Work Center. Default value, let's say mechanics PM Mac. It's a mandatory field, so I select it and on the right side I select required. I select the field one more time, Ctrl D, so we duplicate it. If in your case the field is pasted on the right side, you gotta select this text or placeholder area and change the layout like this. This field will be person responsible, so again, something new. Next field will be for time. I will use something like a counter or yeah, you will see. We go to assets, step input. Okay, it has no label. We go to assets, input label, I rename it to time spent. I select the label and duplicate it. I rename it to min, which stands for minutes. You see, we got to do something with this alignment. I select both components and on the right side, I add auto layout. We change it to horizontal and we center it like this. I take this label and this new component, auto layout, and I set the spacing to zero. The last field to add is installation location. Let's take the work center field, control D. We drag it over here and rename it. I like when things are aesthetic. We select the header. We change this value to fill container. We select the footer and do the same. Now I can resize the whole pop-up. Rename the button to install. Let's also rename this whole frame to installation pop-up. Well, it was a bit tricky, right? No worries, for the installation, it will be much easier because we just duplicate this one. I rename it to the installation in the header as well. 
During the installation, we want to specify where the asset should be placed, in which storage location and what is the current condition. I rename this field to return to storage location and as a default, let's say I enter SP01. I select the field Ctrl D. We rename it to current condition of the object. The value, I will hide it. A user has to select it. We also need the checkbox with the external refurbishment request here, yeah, which will create an order. We go to assets, checkbox, and then we change the text to request external refurbishment. This blue button, I rename it to the install. Oh, we will also change the default time values, let's say to 25 minutes. We can do some visual changes here. I select these three components, auto layout. I click over here and add some spacing, like this. Oh, we gotta set the checkbox as disabled because it can only work for damaged valuation type. We duplicate the pop-up, rename it to damaged, we go to the condition field, unhide the value and rename to damaged. We also change the checkbox state to regular. Well, seems like this is it. We can prototype it. We will start with this select button, hmm. or maybe I'll rename it to action, like this. Now we switch to prototyping mode. We select the button, interactions, add, on click, open overlay, and we select drop down menu. Overlay settings, manual, we align it like this and activate close when clicking outside. We go to the drop down itself, double click the install value, we delete this click here, then interactions, add, on click, open overlay, installation pop-up. Close when clicking outside and add background. Now I go to the installation pop-up, let's select the close button, interactions, add on click and we select close overlay. We go to the drop down, now we select the, the install button and I delete this entry on the right side. Then interactions, add, on click, open overlay, the installation pop-up. Close when clicking outside and add background. We go to the installation pop-up to the first version. We click the valuation type field, interactions, add, on click, swap overlay, the installation pop-up damaged. We click the cancel button in this version of the pop-up, interactions, add, on click, close overlay. Whoa, let's see if it works. You may notice we did not prototype the checkbox and the selection list. These components are pre-configured, let's say. They have these interactions already built. I will show you what I'm talking about. Let's play the prototype. We select the first screen and yeah, play it. Let's say I select the first three entries because I want to install them. And you see, the checkboxes change their state. Now I select the drop down button, install, we got the pop-up with the nice background, okay, I cancel it. This time I select these assets and I want to deinstall them. We got the default values here, I select the condition, damaged, okay, the checkbox is not disabled anymore. I activate it. Yeah, it worked. I know it took more time to design this one, for GUI it was faster. Anyway, now you know the drill. Of course, we could design more stuff like some kind of message toast with the information the equipment was installed or deinstalled and stuff. The idea of this video was to show you how you can start designing your Fiori apps. Of course, without solid business knowledge, it won't make any sense. For example, for plant maintenance, you gotta know what is going there behind the scenes, like creation of orders, so goods movements, valuations and stuff. If you are lacking of this knowledge, I highly recommend you checking my ultimate course for S4HANA asset management slash plant maintenance. That was it folks, I hope you liked this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, comment the video, drop a like or dislike if you didn't find the video useful. As always, in the description of the video you will find cool resources from my side. See you in the next one.